this is the cushion cover I'm going to show you how to make in this tutorial and this can be as personal as you'd like it to be because you're drawing around the hands of the members of your family which I think is a lovely idea. I've used free motion embroidery and actually written the names of the, um, of the family members on here as well but you could add dates, um, you could add maybe little scribblings and drawings. If you've got kids particularly I think it's such a nice idea to have them write their own names on the fabric with an erasable ink pen and then you embroider over the top of them then you've got their little signatures there forever. Um, now I did find it difficult to draw around a dog paw so that's not actually my dog's paw um, but it gives the impression so you could do a smaller one for a cat and a larger one for a dog um, if you have those as members of your family as well. And I also thought what a nice idea would be for your kids to choose fabric that they thought matched the personalities of the members of your family. So for instance this is a little girl's hand and it's got fairy wings on the um, on the fabric and mummy here has got flowers and daddy's got something which is quite a masculine one but again if you've got lots of fabric in your stash then you can choose those. So this is a 16 inch cushion pad so let's give you the details of what you need to cover this cushion pad and then we'll get on with the sewing. I like my cushions to be nice and plump, so I don't make the cushion cover very much bigger than the cushion pad. But if you like a flatter look, then just add another half an inch or so to your measurements. So I've got one square of fabric for the front of my cushion pad. And I've put some wadding on the back of there. It's just an heirloom wadding. And the reason I do that is because I like that sumptuous feeling. And particularly when you're embroidering into it, you get a really nice dimension and a texture. But you can leave that off if you don't have any. Don't worry about that. Um, I'm going to line this cushion cover as well, so you're not going to see any seams on the inside. So another square of fabric. These are cut to one inch larger than my cushion pad. So my cushion pad is 16 inches square, my fabric is 17 inches square, and I, I found that gives me a nice fit. It's an envelope back of the cushion pad, which is very simple to make. So here's my two pieces of fabric folded in half and pressed. So these are going to be slightly longer than your other fabric. So 17 inches in one direction and then longer in the other. And we'll have two of those both pressed along the center so you can see that they overlap. Now these don't have to be of perfect size. So don't worry if your measurements are a little bit out and the overlap is slightly to one side or slightly to the other side. It really doesn't make any difference. And that's the back of the cushion that you're looking at anyhow. So as long as those fabrics overlap, that's all that matters. So let's put the back and the lining to one side and look at our design. So I've been drawing around hands. On the back of the fabric that I'm going to use for the applique, I've put some heat and bond. So this is an adhesive sheet. There's many different brands out there. And you basically iron the lumpy side of the paper, which is the glue, onto the back of your fabric. And then you draw onto the paper. Remember, this is going to be in reverse. So if I draw around my hand here, when I turn that over, the hand's going to be facing in the opposite direction. And that's really important if you're going to make anything like lettering, because you don't want all the words back to front, of course. So just draw around your hand and then cut them out. So you could do a pair of hands. You could do holding hands. Now you can really have some fun, fun with these. I find using the adhesive sheeting easier on pieces of plique like this particularly and you know if you've got kids hands on there which can be quite small because it stops the fabric from moving and lifting as you're sewing and in fact some of these adhesive sheets are so strong that you probably wouldn't even need to sew if you didn't want to and you can wash on a 40 degree cycle without the, um, the, the applique lifting as well, so it's really useful stuff. It also means that when you are free motion embroidering, you're not getting a frayed edge after washing. That may be a look that you like. In which case, um, use something like your 505 spray to hold these in place. Wouldn't recommend pinning, because the pins are going to move all over the place as you're trying to sew around them. Okay, almost there. Cut out as many hands as you need. You could fill the whole of the fabric with hands, so it doesn't just have to be the three that I'm putting on here. You could literally cover the whole fabric just in hands. I think that would, that would look really good. Okay, now before I peel the backing off and iron these on, I'm going to arrange my hands. 
So this time I've got hands facing in different directions and I've kept all to the blues. And I'm going to have my little paw print in here as well. Now, although the blues kind of blend into the background because it's all blue, I'm going to embroider around them in black thread. So that's really going to make my applique stand out. So how should we have these? This is the difficult thing. You're going to spend ages deciding how you're going to put them before you actually commit. I'll do it like this. I think that looks quite nice. So they're all, there we go. All kind of facing the center. Okay, now these are here when ironed. So I'm just going to put my ironing mat underneath. If you're going to overlap your hands at all, start sewing the bottom one first. So in that case, I would put a little mark with a heat erasable pen, just where the hand's going to go, stick the first one down, and then embroider it, and then place the next one on top, and then embroider it and build it up. But mine aren't overlapping this time, so that's going to be quite easy. Remember as well, if you're going to write names around here, you need to leave some space for that as well. I'm happy with this. So let's peel away the backing. Tweezers help here. And if you can't quite get the edge of the paper to lift, scratch it in the centre. And then you can peel it easily from the centre. So that iron's on there. These stick really quickly as well. There's one. So just do this until you've got all of your applique pieces fixed. And then we'll start to sew. Now I've chosen to use free motion embroidery and this may be the first time that you've ever done anything like that. So I just want to explain to you um, how easy this is and how much fun it's going to be and really encourage you to give it a go. Uh, it's easier to use a free motion embroidery and draw around the outline of more intricate designs like this one um, rather than a satin stitch where you have to go all around the edge with a zigzag stitch and really be quite accurate. With free motion embroidery, the way I like to do it anyway, you don't have to be particularly accurate because I like that scribbly look, almost as if you've taken your needle and thread and just scribbled around the edge of your work. You can be more accurate if you wish, but that's just the way that I like to do it. So you'll need to put a free motion or darning foot onto your sewing machine. Drop your feed dogs if you can. A straight stitch, it doesn't matter the length of the stitch. Relax your shoulders, a lot of people tend to really hunch up when they're doing free motion embroidery. And if you're going to do a lot of free motion embroidery, invest in some quilters gloves. These have little rubbery bits on the end and it helps you to grip the fabric and control it as you're sewing. So, oop, just lost my foot pedal. So let's get going. So you can move your fabric in any direction you like. I'm just going to stop after a few stitches, put the needle down and just cut away the initial tail of thread so I'm not sewing over the top of it because that can be quite difficult to remove. And then literally guide the edge of your fabric or the edge of your applique underneath the needle. You've got a lot of fabric here, just stop, spin it around and go in the opposite direction. So you may find it either easier to push your fabric away from the needle, pull it towards your needle, or you just go backwards and forwards as you wish. So I'm not being precious about being within lines, being perfectly straight, controlling the, um, the speed at which you pull the fabric underneath the needle. Also depicts the length of the stitch, which kind of makes sense. If I'm going to um, use a really fast movement, my stitches are going to be longer. If I'm going to move the fabric slowly, the stitch is going to be smaller. It really doesn't matter as long as you keep the stitches uniform. Well, as uniform as you can, you know, don't, don't worry too much about it. 
Now I've been around once and I've got a wobbly line. I don't mind a wobbly line, but to stop it looking like an accident, I'm going to go around twice. And then a wobbly line's going to look deliberate. You could go around three or four times if you wanted to. But I find that this really adds to that scribbly kind of look. And the more times we go around, the bolder the black outline is going to be as well. So particularly on heavily patterned fabric like this or a darker fabric, it really makes the stitches stand out. So just continue around all of your hands, all of your paws, all of your designs until you're happy with the result. So that's how we're looking and I think that looks really neat. So what I'm going to do now is to add just some, some names and again that could be dates, it could be nicknames. Um, and embroider over the top. So I'm using a friction pen. This is a heat erasable pen. Always do a little test first because sometimes these pens, because they're not really meant for fabric, can bleach. Um, in which case, you've got a choice of either water or um, air erasable pens, but you will have to either wet them or wait for the air to make the, the ink disappear and be very careful not to iron over those kind of inks because they, they will become permanent. Or you could use a chalk pencil, that's probably a good alternative because then you can just brush away the, uh, the chalk marks afterwards. So I've decided to go with my fabric this way up. Uh, initially I was thinking like that, but you know when you put things together and you think actually I think we could do it sideways, I think that way looks best. So this was dad's hand. So I'm just going to write dad at the side here. And this one was mum. And this one we'll call Ben. And the dog we're going to call Spot. And you could again write more on here, our family and ages and dates or birthdays or if this is a gift maybe it's a, a Mother's Day gift, Happy Mother's Day, Happy Christmas, Happy Birthday. So you really can make this as personal as you like. Now because I'm embroidering over words this time, I'm not just scribbling around the edge, um, I am going to try and be a little more accurate just so that you can read what I've written. Uh, but I'm still going to go over all of the, those letters twice so they really stand out. So I'll get on and do this and then we'll start to put the cushion together. So there, my embroidery is finished. Um, you could use different colour threads, you can maybe put some hearts or flowers or whatever else. But I, I, I think this one's kept quite simple but it's very clear who everybody is. So let's start to construct the cushion cover. Um, remember I had two folded pieces of fabric that are going to go on the back to make my envelope um, fastening. I'm going to put these over the top of my front of the cushion pad, cushion cover. And remember these are overlapping, like so. So I'll put a couple of pins in here, just to hold that together for now. And then I'm going to sew a line just across the bottom here. And this is how I want to see a continuous seam on the outside without any hand sewing or joining. And then when we look on the inside of the cushion cover, you don't see any raw edges at all. So it is a little bit of extra fabric when you do it this way. But certainly if you're, if you're gifting or if you're selling what you're making, it's quite nice to have that professional finish. So I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I put the walking foot onto my sewing machine. So it might be a little bit noisier. And the reason I like a walking foot um, is because I'm now sewing through lots of layers of fabric and I don't want them to slip. So just sew a line across here of, I don't know, about 10 inches or so. It doesn't have to be exact. I'll take that off. What I'm also going to do is to just sew over the sides where the fabric overlaps, just to hold them in place, basically, so I can take the pins out for the next bit. That's fine. Okay. So now my final piece of fabric goes over the top. I 
I'm going to turn this over and sew from this side, which I know looks a little bit messy, but you don't see this and the cushion's finished. So this is all of the back of my embroidery. I'll just take a few of these off. Right. What I'm going to do is to sew around the whole of the edge. You can pin this if you like, um, leaving out this turning gap. So where my stitch line is here, I need to make sure that as I'm coming around, the line joins up. So I need a really neat edge there. So literally, we're going to sew all the way around. There we go. I'm going to snip across the corners. And that cuts down on the amount of bulk in the corners of the cushion and makes the, the points a little bit more pointy. And then we're going to turn this the right side out twice. You'll see why in a second. So when you turn this through the first time, you'll see the envelope back and the lining side. So it's still kind of inside out, even though I've turned it through. Okay, so that's the lining, that's the outside, and this is the gap that I left. So I need to sew this um, by hand. So let's have a needle and thread. There we go. Now, be careful when you're sewing by hand here that you don't sew over the seam allowance because then you're going to see the stitches on the right side. And the whole idea of lining this is that you don't see any stitches. So I'll just knot off here. Trim that thread off. And then I'm going to sew. So there's my stitch line. I'm going to pick up a, a little bit of fabric just underneath the stitch line and then back over to the lining side. So I'm doing a ladder stitch into the seam, back over to the lining. So do a few stitches back and forth like this. Try and keep the stitches as small as you can because then you seem, you seem to look neat. And then every so often, <coughs> excuse me, just gently pull the thread and your seam will close. And then we carry on sewing all the way across like this until the opening's closed. And then we can turn our cushion cover the right side out. We'll be finished. There, so I've just come to the end of my turning gap. Let me knot off the thread. Snip that. And now we'll turn it through again. We'll need to give it a final press. Push my cushion pad inside. And we're finished. So you see you've got your perfectly finished personalised cushion cover. Nice and neat and continuous seam all around the outside. And if you do turn this around to the inside, you've got no raw edges. So you've got a really nice professional finish. And it feels quite sumptuous as well because you've got the two layers of fabric on the envelope. And of course, you've got your wadding behind the embroidery on the front as well. So have fun making yours. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and I can't wait to see how you've been making your cushion covers. I'll see you soon.